Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. Today we'll be taking a look at Forever 21. This first location we're going to look at is located at Arrowhead Town Center and was formerly a Mervyn store. And we were immediately shocked by the amount of garbage we saw out in front of the store. This is actually a really nice mall and none of the other anchor stores look like this. Forever 21 was founded in 1984 in Los Angeles, California by husband and wife team Duwan Chang and Jin Suk Chang. Forever 21 is a fast fashion retailer with 815 stores worldwide, and the reason we're talking about them today is they are on the verge of bankruptcy. If you're not familiar with fast fashion, it's a term for items that are manufactured and sold cheaply and quickly to capitalize on current fashion trends, and it also means they quickly end up in the garbage. And speaking of garbage, look at all of that garbage there, there was even more in front of this entrance. I've read a lot of online reviews of people complaining that Forever 21 stores have really started to become dirty and unkept, but we were still pretty shocked with what we saw in this store. Right when we walked in we noticed the carpet is just completely trashed and worn out, it needs to be replaced. And then Mark noticed over in the corner there was a large clump of spider webs. That's never a good look for a store like this. Hopefully they're coming across the camera there, it's a little hard with the sunlight. And then we immediately spotted a big gouge in the wall. And once we walked into the store, things didn't get much better. Forever 21 is a privately owned business and they don't release any of their financial information. But an industry analyst recently told Forbes that they estimated that their sales have dropped by 20 to 25% in the last year alone. Forever 21 also went through a massive expansion. They went from around 480 stores in 2010 to around 800 stores in 2018. And this massive expansion caused them to incur a lot of debt. This increase in debt and decrease in sales has led to a recipe for bankruptcy, unfortunately. It's also caused their stores to become incredibly neglected. Look at how banged up those display units are. We also noticed a lot of dirty and damaged items on the sales racks. Forever 21 started out by only carrying items for women, but they now carry clothing for children and men as well. Here's Mark trying to convince me this leopard print shirt is a good idea. I don't think it is. One of these style trends that's been popular recently are things like neon colors, Japanese inspired things, 80s and 90s designs, and even vaporwave aesthetic, and we saw a lot of that here. And a lot of these designs looked very familiar. That's something that Forever 21 has been accused of quite a bit, is stealing other people's designs. And they've been called out for this and sued many times because of it. Now I'm not sure where this design came from, but it's pretty terrible. It's a shirt that looks like it's just been ravaged by moths. I'm not sure who would wear this or who the intended consumer is for this. Now this is a line they've been advertising quite a bit recently, their Pepsi themed stuff, and it looks like this is just another thing riding that vaporwave aesthetic bandwagon. You've got the Pepsi logo and neon colors here, neon green drawstrings, but it looked like a lot of this stuff was actually on clearance already. Here's a neon Pepsi jacket, and I had mentioned that the goal of fast fashion was to be quickly and cheaply manufactured, and we can see that here, the Pepsi logo on a lot of these is already damaged and falling apart. There's a, a big chunk of it faded there on the S, you can see. This store actually looked kind of busy, there was quite a few customers walking around, but I think it was because they were having a huge sale, it seemed like three quarters of the store was on clearance sale. Something else I found surprising is that the couple that owns and founded Forever 21 used to have a net worth of about $3 billion and now it's down to an estimated $1.6 billion. Now I'm sure you're thinking what I'm thinking, oh boo-hoo, they only have $1.6 billion now, but $1.4 billion is quite a bit to lose to try and keep this operation afloat. Something else important to consider is that Forever 21 is currently one of the largest tenants in U.S. malls. And a lot of the stores they've opened in recent years have been anchor-sized stores like this one. Malls are already having a hard time filling empty space, so having a bunch of stores and anchor size stores go empty all of a sudden could really add to the struggles that they're already facing. Like I mentioned earlier, the store was originally a Mervyn's, and it doesn't look like they changed much. That white tile is definitely from the Mervyn's, and it looks like they just pulled all the carpet up and polished the concrete. Here's some more of those 80s and 90s designs I was talking about. It seems like they might be chasing the tail end of this trend. I got a pretty good chuckle at this Polaroid jacket. I mean, I'm, it's kind of neat, but I really don't see anybody actually buying or wearing that unless they're way into the vaporwave scene. The store opened in 2009, but a lot of these fixtures look much older than that. I don't know if these were originally Mervyn's fixtures or what, but they are just beat to hell. Look at how bad that looks. 
on its face, it's kind of surprising that Forever 21 is doing so poorly financially. I mean, there were quite a few customers in this store, and it looked like a lot of people were looking at things. And also, there's tons of, like, Forever 21 haul videos on YouTube, so they're getting free publicity there. But I think just the rapid expansion into malls that are honestly starting to fail has really caused them a lot of trouble. Something else I've seen people complain about is lack of employees in the store, and it looks like this store is definitely suffering from that. A lot of the displays are just a mess, and there's not enough employees to go around and clean up after the customers. We really didn't see more than like three or four employees in this huge store while we were here. Before we went to film this video, it had been a very long time since I've been in a Forever 21 store, and honestly, I remember them being much nicer than this. I was really shocked to see everything looking the way it does. It looks like they have a lot more than just a financial mess to clean up. I didn't think it would be fair to just show one trashed store, so let's take a look at a second location. This one is at Santan Village in Gilbert, Arizona. And this store looked a little bit nicer inside. It has a lot of the traditional Forever 21 theming that I was expecting to see, but there were far fewer customers. This store is also a lot smaller than the first location we looked at, so it's probably easier for the few employees that are here to keep things maintained and cleaned up. Also, having less foot traffic is probably helping with that. I also noticed that the products that they carry here seem to be a little bit different than what was carried at the first location. There are some t-shirts and things here and there, but there's a lot more dresses and formal wear here. The store isn't perfect either. There are parts of the store that are dirty and covered in dust bunnies. If we take a closer look here, you can see this little area it doesn't look like it's been dusted in a very long time. Last month, Forever 21 was in talks to try and raise financing, but those talks seem to have stalled, and it looks like a bankruptcy is pretty much inevitable at this point. Internet retailers have done a really good job of taking over the fast fashion segment, and it looks like Forever 21 may be another casualty of that. At a time when a lot of other retailers were closing locations and shrinking operations, Forever 21 bet on rapid expansion, and it looks like that bet may not pay off in the end. I've never been a fan of this segment of retail. I think fast fashion is kind of a waste of resources and money and landfill space, but it's unfortunate to think that once again, malls are going to be dealt another blow and they're already struggling quite a bit. I imagine we'll hear more about the bankruptcy filing in the next couple of weeks and then we'll just have to see if Forever 21 can turn things around. What are your thoughts on Forever 21 though? Is it a store that you like to shop at, or do you think it's just cheap, tacky crap? And also, what are your thoughts on the whole fast fashion retail segment? Do you think it's wasteful? And lastly, do you think Forever 21 can actually turn things around via a bankruptcy? I'm not so sure. I'm worried that empty Forever 21 stores like this may become a more common sight in malls in the future. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my look at Forever 21. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also make sure to follow with the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.